okay let's set this up so I'm gonna close this and you can see here that I have a NetLab connection and here is the same scenario there's our PC at 192.168.1.100 and here's our PC at 3.100 and we've got three routers here we're gonna be configuring um, CBAC or context-based access control CBAC on R1 over here and we'll have to create our two access lists and we're going to inspect the traffic coming into the fast Ethernet 01 port and then that's going to create dynamic permit entries on the outside um, interface allowing that traffic to return but everything else will be blocked because we're going to block everything with our static ACLs on the outside. Um, these routers have EIGRP routing protocol working so they're exchanging routing table information or they're exchanging their links or their routes with each other so that they uh, have learned about the other networks that exist out there so that's going to be important when we do our configuring and so let's run some quick tests just to establish that we have connections across the network so we'll say we'll open up PCA right here and we'll ping PCC and we'll also um, attempt to do something else as well so what I'll do is I'll open up PCA and here's PCA and we'll just open up a command prompt here and you can see from the command prompt if I do an up arrow I can ping 3.100 so I can ping across the network right also I'm running a TFTP uh, program here that has a TFTP server but it also has a TFTP client and I've put in the host on the other end of the network 3.100 port 69 and I've um, attached a local file dans.txt right here and we're gonna try to send it to the other TFTP server on the other end of the network. On the other end of the network is this computer right here and it's running the same TFTP program but the server here and you can see here we're gonna see if we can send it across. Well we have no firewalls in place right we just have open communications we haven't written our ACLs or our um, CBAC firewall yet so this should work so we'll hit put and you can see that we get a statement that it worked. We'll click OK. And we'll go over here to the server. We'll do a show directory. And you can see there it is, dans.txt. It's in the programs files folder. And we can examine it using Explorer. Right? And there it is. And we open it up. And sure enough, it has the statement that I wrote in it. So the text file transferred across. So we have communication to the other side of the network and so now all we need to do is configure our um, access list, our uh, context-based access control, our CBAC firewall, our stateful firewall and then see what happens to our communications right now before we configure it on R1 I've got R1 here ready to go but we want to look at the commands. I want to talk about the commands that we're going to be putting in and explain the exact commands that we're going to be using. Now the way this is going to work is we need an ACL, an access list, on the inside of the network for FA0 slash 1. So we're going to have an ACL here and we're going to need another ACL on the outside of the network and both of these ACLs are going to need to be extended ACLs and they're both going to be applied inbound um, going into the router. Now from inside the network it's going to be going into the router but it's actually trying to leave the inside network so it's going to be going into the router from this direction right and then the return on the outside it's also going to be applied going into the router but this will be for traffic coming from the outside trying to enter this um, interior network right and so we have to write two access lists and these are the statements that we're gonna write and I've got it listed here and so the first access list from for the one that's going to be the first access list that we're going to write for the local network here right leaving the local network and then entering the router on FA01 we're going to talk about that one first and so what we're going to do is we're going to say access dash list 100 which is the number range for an extended ACL 
and extended ACL is 100 to 199, so we just use the number 100, and we're going to permit TCP traffic to leave the network. So it's going to TCP traffic from the source network 192.168.1 network, and then the wildcard bits 0.0.0.255, which is the inverse of a class C subnet mask, which would be 255.255.255.0. So the inverse of that is the exact opposite, which would be 0 .0 0.0.0.255. So this will be the source network, right, to any destination. So we're going to allow TCP traffic from the one network to anywhere. And then we're going to permit UDP traffic from the one network to any destination. And we're going to permit ICMP, pings, from our one network to any destination, right? And then at the end of that, we're going to do an explicit uh, deny IP from any source to any destination. So we're allowing TCP traffic to leave the network, UDP traffic to leave the network, and ICMP traffic to leave the network, right? But we're denying IP from any source, any, everything else is denied. All right, then we apply this to interface FA0 slash 1, and then the um, command is IP access dash group 100, the number of the access list, inbound. So that will apply it on this interface coming into the router right here. Okay. Then the, um, the outside ACL, the outside access list, is also an extended access list. And we're going to use just the next number up, 101. Right. So it's a different access list because it has a different number. And what we're going to do is, first thing we need to do is we need to permit the EIGRP routing protocol from any source to any destination. We need EIGRP, these routers, to be able to talk to each other and send hello packets to form neighbor relationships so that they can exchange uh, information about the routes that they carry. So we're going to allow that. And then we're going to permit um, three different types of ICMP messages. So we're going to allow uh, from any source to any destination echo replies. We want to be able to get echo replies for our pings. And we're going to allow unreachable messages if a, if a network is unreachable. And we're going to allow, let's say, a time exceeded message. Now there's other ICMP messages that we could allow, but I've just chosen a few that we want to explicitly allow through the firewall on the outside into the network, right? But as you can see on the next line, we're going to deny IP from any source to any destination. So we're going to deny everything else. So what are we denying? We're denying everything that's TCP. We're denying everything that's UDP. We're denying all kinds of essentially uh, IP addresses. And so all kinds of traffic is going to be denied, right? So people will not be able to get through our firewall on the outside. Web pages will not be able to return. Um, nothing. Nothing's allowed through, right? But what we're going to do is we're going to dynamically and temporarily allow permits to get through because we're going to inspect the traffic down here, and I'll talk about that in a second. So, um, so anyway, this is the access list for the outside, and then we apply it to the serial interface at serial 0 slash 0 slash 0, IP access dash group 101, access list 101, inbound, right? Now, if we were just to leave it like this, right, we would have a problem because we'd say, okay, we're allowing, let's say, somebody to request a web page on TCP port 80, right, out. So they can request the web page coming out. So here comes the web request, right? And here's the web server over here. And so this guy says, I want to request a web page. So that's allowed through. The firewall says, okay, yeah, we'll permit TCP to any destination. So the request will hit the web server over here. But on its way back, when it hits the firewall, it's going to hit this access list. And it's going to say, well, we're permitting EIGRP or EIGRP. We're permitting ICMP. And we're denying everything else. No, you can't get through, right? Well with the way context-based access control works is we're going to inspect the traffic as it leaves, right? So as this traffic was to leave, and the, the traffic will be inspected and the permit statement will be seen for TCP and it will create a dynamic return entry. It'll basically create a dynamic access list 101 permit statement that will permit TCP from that specific web server 
to the specific network on port 80 and we won't see it happen we don't write it because it's dynamically and then temporarily created after the traffic is done and the web page is delivered the um, dynamic permit statement is um, deleted it's temporary so it's deleted once it's been achieved alright now how do we do that well, all we have to do is create some inspection rules so we'll say IP inspect and then name and then we need to give it a name so we'll say CBAC context based access control dash FW for firewall so this is just a variable name right it's, it's all capitals it's just a variable a name for our inspection rules and we're gonna inspect TCP traffic which will cover port 80 right and we're gonna inspect UDP traffic which should cover port um, which should cover TFTP, right? Now, actually, there's going to be a mistake in here. We'll, we'll uh, have to fix it and troubleshoot it later. But um, for right now, we'll inspect TCP and UDP. And then we're going to apply it to the inside interface, IP, inspect, the name of our inspection um, rule, uh, and then inbound. So that will apply this inspection to the inside interface right here. And this is what will inspect and then create the dynamic return uh, permit statements. So let's do it. 